everybody. Thank you for coming out today. I know the weather was nice yesterday, but today it sucks. <laughs> um, but that's okay. So, Maker Law Group. It's my baby. We have a wonderful mid-sized firm in York, York. Uh, that's where we're located. We do primarily real estate and personal injury. So, we do purchase and sales and all of those fun things with finance. And uh, we do personal injury, which is car accidents, slip and falls, dog bites, things like that. Um, I've been a paralegal for about 20 years. So 20 years ago when I started, that is when the Landlord and Tenant Board was in person. So you got to see the tenants, you had to see, you had to see the landlords, you get to sit there all day and watch the circus, because that's exactly what it is, it's a circus. So you're gonna find that I'm very honest um, how I feel about the board and how I feel about Landlord and Tenant Adjudicators. I will give you a lot of background information, answer whatever questions that you may have, uh, but you're going to get an honest answer from me. So if you're a tenant or a landlord, I'm going to say sorry now, okay? <laughs> so a lot of what I did in my presentation, I do a lot of these presentations. I probably do a couple of months for brokerages and things like that, and simply just for information, okay? There's um, a lot of information to give. I won't be able to give you everything today. But I do want to give you a little bit of background. So this presentation I did, I put together a year ago, okay? And I left it this way to show you how much it's actually changed at the tribunal. So I'm assuming everybody knows that landlord and tenants are subject to the Residential Tenancies Act. That is their law, okay? Nothing supersedes this law. No police officers, no contract law, um, it doesn't matter. Nothing supersedes the Residential Tenancies Act. That is everything. So, <clears throat> before COVID, um, the Landlord and Tenant Board, we'll call it the LTB, had about 20,000 applications in its queue, okay? COVID hits, everything comes to a stop, you don't have to pay rent anymore, you guys remember, nobody has to pay rent anymore, um, everything goes on pause, anyways. So last, uh, what are we, we're in March. So last October, there was about 60,000 applications that were in the backlog, okay? So before COVID, it was 20. Last October, it was 60,000. Today, we're sitting at about 55. So it hasn't really changed, okay? We're still at a crazy backlog. Um, adjudicators, so who are adjudicators? Adjudicators are regular people. They're not lawyers, they're not paralegals. They have no legal background. The regular people that go through a course and learn what the RTA is, that's it. They learn what the Residential Tendencies Act is and they base their decisions on what they learn, okay? Um, so in February of 2023, our government invested money into getting new adjudicators. They got about 40, that's all that they spent money on so far and that's why we're at where we are now. We're still at a huge backlog. Um, wait times, so before COVID, uh, wait times were about two to three months, depending on the application. So depending on what kind of application, depending on what kind of problem you have with your tenant, will depend on where you lie in booking with the board. So if it's for not paying rent, that's an N4, and that falls on certain days. So you're put into these blocks, okay? Um, so waiting to get a, a date for one of these blocks before took about two, three months. Now we're looking at six to eight months, but it's not six to eight months because it's more than six to eight months because if you get heard, if you actually get heard on that date, great. Then you get heard, they reserve their decision, you're waiting another month, maybe a month and a half for an order, then you have to put, get in a share, so you're looking at about a year, okay? So this is just for you to know before you start anything. Why is this happening? So many reasons. So, everything's expensive. Apples are expensive, mortgage rates are high, uh, rent is expensive, everything's expensive. A lease is expensive, everything's expensive these days. Uh, social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, we have platforms for people to meet and talk without having to meet and talk and actually getting to know who you are. So every night, I have about 10 fake Facebook profiles, just so you guys know. Every night, I sit on Facebook and I go through all of the um, chat rooms, tenant chat rooms, landlord chat rooms, 
I, I, I'm such a creep. I creep through every single chat room and I watch people give <coughs> bad, illegal advice to each other. And they hold on to this advice and they just run with it. And this just caused more and more delays between the relationship of landlords and tenants. Um, also, the delays of the board are because there's not enough adjudicators. They have the amount that they set in, they invested in this amount, it's not really doing anything. They put in this automated system that's just creating this backlog. The other reason why this is happening is exactly why um, I do what I do. Nobody really knows how to be a landlord or a tenant when it comes to problems. Um, they look at it, they don't look at it the right way, they don't start it off the right way. Every relationship, and being a landlord and tenant, is like having a relationship. Every relationship takes effort, okay? Um, what do I mean? I'm, I don't mean taking your landlord or tenant for dinner, but I mean <laughs> investing that time in that relationship, checking in on them, um, doing different things, such as single key, which is amazing. Uh, it's the greatest thing that you could have, that you guys could have thought of. Single key is wonderful, um, but just not knowing what, where to begin, not knowing, you know, where to start to solidify this relationship. Um, what are tenants doing? Like I said, social media. They're talking to each other, giving each other bad advice. Uh, they're affiliating, meeting in person, talking, saying, "Oh well." Your landlord is selling, you're gonna at least get 30 grand if you wanna leave. You don't have to leave. Nobody has to make you leave, and they're not wrong. Nobody, ha nobody can make them leave. Um, but for landlords who you know, are trying to look at this as a business, it's costing them a lot of money. So you can't really run a business if you are losing money, right? Uh, what are landlords doing? Self-research. So just like tenants, they're giving each other bad advice. A lot of the people that call me, call me when there's a problem. They call me at the very end. They call me right when uh, the, land, the tenant hasn't paid for six months. Well, why didn't you call me after one week? Why did you call me after six months? Um, after they trashed the place, um, after you know they served serve them with a form that they weren't allowed to serve them with, and now they're being taken to the board. So they're always calling me right when that problem happened. They never call me before to be educated on avoiding these problems. Uh, landlords are also afraid, very afraid. Everyone is living in fear because they don't want someone to stop paying the rent. Or the tenant is afraid to reach out to the landlord because uh, you know, I don't want to bother them. I don't want them to kick me out. Everyone's just afraid and that just, shows that there is a really bad line of communication, horrible relationship between these two people that are supposed to be really in business together. Um, also, uh, landlords are also, a lot of landlords are very uh, unmindful, meaning they haven't been to their space in two years. I, I ask them, when's the last time you were there? Oh, it's been a couple of years. Why has it been a couple of years? It's your house. Why haven't you gone to visit your house? Why haven't you made an effort to change the light bulb? It's, it's all about the effort. So a lot of the landlord and tenant stuff is about education, okay? So what does it mean to be a good landlord or what can you do to be a good landlord? So number one thing, talk to somebody who knows what the law is, right? Meet with a professional. It doesn't have to be me. There's a lot of paralegals out there. Lawyers don't usually do a lot of the landlord and tenant stuff, but there's a lot of paralegals out there. You can call the landlord and tenant board. They don't give you a lot of information. You'll stay on hold for an hour and 45 minutes. They'll give you a very generic answer and that'll be it. If you don't get hung up on when you're on hold. Um, but review it with a professional, call me. Simona, I have this landlord, this is my problem. Simona, I have this tenant, this is my problem. What do you suggest? Phone calls are free. To be honest with you, a lot of the stuff that I do is free because I just want to give you advice. I really just want to educate everybody on what to do and how to do it right. I want to avoid going to the board at all costs. If you have to go to the board, I will tell every single client, you are at the mercy of this adjudicator. You don't know who's going to be that day. You don't know what they're going to decide. And you really, you really don't know if it's gonna go your way or the other way. Everyone thinks, oh no, it's not fair, I'm a landlord, this is wrong, they have to be rent. I can give you so many stories 
so many stories of tenants who haven't paid, <coughs> and they're still living there. And it's not because I saw, it's because that's the way the rules are. That's just the way it is. So definitely contact a professional. Um, you can be educated on the law, or you can educate yourself. Um, you know, I've always wanted to do, always wanted to do this landlord and tenant series of teaching people how to be landlords, teaching people how to be tenants, because it's so important. You will save so much money, so much time. Oh, hopefully the board goes out of business because of it, because they really, they, they don't help. They don't help mediate between two parties. Um, there's also endless tools available. So like single key, um, there's other things that, similar to single key or on top of single key. There's different platforms, different websites, uh, different, um, different people that can help you start things off the right way. Not to knock anybody, any professionals in this room, but sometimes if you're not practicing in something specific, you just don't know everything about it, right? We, we can't be professionals in every single aspect of life. We can only be professionals in what we do. So why not go to a professional and get their advice? Um, also, this is what I say to everybody, whether you're a tenant or a landlord. Build your relationship with the other party, okay? We have relationships personally, we have our friendships, we have our colleagues, uh, we have people that we see once in a while, but these are all relationships. So if you treated your good relationship the way you treat your landlord and tenant relationship, would you still have friends? Would you still be married? Uh, would you just be lonely? You always have to think about that, okay? You always have to think about what it is that you're doing with your landlord or your tenant. And I think, yeah, that's it. So I'm saying this, if anybody needs any, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. I, uh, I will never say no to anybody. Anybody? That yes, was, I had no idea how little the adjudicators had in the background. That's crazy. That they're not lawyers or paralegals, and it's literally, I can go read the act and become an adjudicator. That's, yeah. <laughs> like you said, you always learn something new, and I, yeah, that's just mind blowing. It's, it's wrong. Oh, for sure. Like, you it's can't wrong. just read an act and interpret it how I feel like I'm going to interpret it. That's mm -hmm. insane. No, no. And the thing is, is that everybody gets audited, right? Yeah. We, we all, as certain professionals, get audited, but also when you work for the government, you get audited even worse. Yeah. So if you make a decision, that's why they never give you the decision on the spot. Right? The only time they give you a decision on the spot is if the other party didn't show up and they can't be there to represent themselves or defend themselves. That's the only time they'll make a decision on the spot if the evidence is clear cut. But if both parties are there, they never give you a decision there because they wait to review all the documents because they want to make sure they don't get in trouble. That's why they always tend to side on you know, the side of caution because which is usually, listen, I'm a tenant now. So I'm not knocking anybody, but it's usually the tenants. It is, because they're the ones that are in more need. Francis? Do you provide uh, representation to the, to the tribunal for, um, for landlords or tenants? I do, I do. It's not that I don't want to. Right. But what I would rather do is I would rather help you. Yeah. You'd rather mediate. I'd rather get you guys not go. Right. Yeah, I'd right. rather you not go. Last year, maybe I went five times. Right. And I get 30 calls a day. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, question, something you said earlier in your presentation, that the government put a bunch of money in the lead adjudicators and train, so on and so forth. And you just mentioned about the audit. So, I mean, adjudicators, how can I put it? Great? Or skewed towards the tenants? The, the, the landlords? It seems like it, but I can't say yes because yeah. they, they not because I'm scared to, mm -hmm. uh, but because they well, have. In your, in your estimation. They have favored the landlords, mm -hmm. but 90% they favor the tenants. So, just to give you guys an example, um, I have a client who uh, is. She's a landlord and she is owed six months of rent, okay? Tenants stop paying. So we went ahead and we filed an N4, that's a non-payment eviction notice, and then we filed an L2, which begins the process, okay? 
We started this in December. I still don't have a date, okay? Last month, she calls me. She goes, oh my God, you're not going to believe it. He paid me one month. And I said to her, that's horrible. She's like, why? I said, because he just showed that he's trying to catch up on his payments. He's trying to pay you what is owed. They're not going to evict him. So whenever we get a date, which I guarantee will be probably in August, they're going to say to the landlord, uh, I think you should do a payment plan. And the landlord is going to say, but I'm out 30 grand. And the adjudicator is going to say, but, you know, sir tenant, do you think you can do this payment plan? Yeah, I think I can. Yeah, I think I can. Okay, so now she was out 30. Now she's going to be out probably 55. And then what? I, I don't have 55 to pay one person in one shot. So um, that's the problem. She do you think, are you attaching session 78 on it? Makes no sense. The, the, the rules are the rules. It makes no difference. But There's if no they were one day late, one penny short, you can take them out. Why? That. That's, that, that's only for commercial. You can't do that. It's only if you no, get an order. order. You yes, the board. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You get the order. If you get it. Yes. So if you go through the motions, yes, yes. If you go through the motions and they say, okay, we're going to do a payment plan, and then your representative or your landlord says, okay, we're going to add. Can we just add, you know, an amendment and add section seventy-eight, meaning that if they default by one day, we can get them out. Sure, they'll add that, but that'll still take you about three months to fulfill. Four months. It sucks. It sucks. Yeah. $3,000 times four, let's just say average, it sucks. Yes. Yeah. So that's why it's all about doing it right from the beginning. Any other questions? What are, apart from um, if the tenant's not paying, what are some of the other common issues that you see both from the landlord and the tenant side? Um, so from the tenant side, okay, from the landlord side, the biggest thing I see right now are um, sales. So they're selling the house, they wanted it non-tenanted, which is a really big thing right now because nobody <coughs> wants to take somebody else's tenant. So they, wanted, they want somebody who's going to be out of there, they want a vacant home, or they're buying it with the condition that the home will be vacant in 60 days. So we're all sitting here with our fingers crossed that in 60 days, when it's time for the closing date, the tenant leaves. So that's one, that's, another, that's actually a bigger one than the end fours lately. Um, and for tenants, oh my gosh, sky's the limit. Uh, a lot of maintenance, a lot of maintenance. I want to abate my rent, so I want a discount on my rent because they didn't shovel my snow within 24 hours. Um, or, you know, very little vital services, meaning that, you know, light, hydro, water, stuff like that. That's, that doesn't really happen anymore because everyone knows better. Um, but sh snow shoveling is actually a really big thing because landlords don't understand that you are not allowed to make your tenant shovel the snow or it, it, even around their car, salt, you're not allowed to. Even if you put it in the lease, you're not allowed to. It's gotta be a separate lease and you've gotta compensate them for it. You've either gotta pay them for a removal or take it off their rent. And a lot of people don't do that. And then all of a sudden, the tenant is on Facebook and someone starts talking about it, they're like, hold on a second. My landlord's been making me shovel my snow for a year, and I've been doing it myself. I've been here for a year. And then they go ahead and they put in an application, and, oh no, first what they do is they tell their landlord, I want my money back, and the landlord says, I'm not giving you money back. And then, then they start to fight. And who's gonna win that case most likely? The tenant. The tenant. Yeah, 100%. Even if there wasn't a lease agreement, that mm -hmm. it's your responsibility? There are certain things that are really clear cut, super clear cut. If you sell your house and you want your tenant to leave, you have to give them the right form, but you better have a signed agreement of purchase and sale, and you better give them one month rent. Like, there are some things that are, that are not negotiable. No way. And then there are some things that are, you know, I said no pets, but they came in with no pets, and now they have a pet. You know, it depends. 
So what, what would you say is the solution to reduce the backlog if maybe there's only 40 or 50 adjudicators? Is it for the government to put more money to have more bigger uh, amount of them? Or where, where is the solution in your opinion? So in my opinion, the easiest solution is always throwing money at it. So invest money and get more people working in the board, okay? More qualified, people. more qualified people working in the board. That's number one. Also, change the information that you're giving people out. Give people information. The problem is, is that it's the law, so you're not allowed to give legal advice. That's so you're you're kind of in a weird gray area. But make things available for landlords and tenants to be educated on what to do correctly. But then again, if you think about it, the government also makes money on every application that comes in. So if you take 55,000 times 200, that's a big number, right? So they're also getting paid for all of this. Um, so that's number one. Number one is to obviously put money into it, educating people, um, and changing the rules a little bit, changing the forms a little bit. Why does it have to take so long? Why do things have to be extended for such long periods of time? Just, you gotta shorten the time frames. But, Always make, making tools available for landlords and tenants in every aspect is the way to fix it right now. But I don't think it's going to be fixed anytime soon, guys. Sorry. So actually has a application coming out. Um, they are asking uh, there's a lot of design already, like in terms of landlords asking um, that for tenants if they don't pay rent. It's an automatic eviction. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's like 50% bond of the board is because they don't pay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that'll ever happen. I don't think so either. But if we don't try, yeah, it will never happen, right? Yeah. I do have a question. So it, um, once you gone to the LTD and you got your order um, for the written order to come out, you said it's gonna take like a month, two months, sometimes four to six weeks. Okay. Okay. Um, is there any way that can massage it a little faster? Nothing. I've tried shortening motions. I've sh I've tried um, uh, sending things to the adjudicators directly. Nothing. Uh, I'm thinking about sending things to the office. Room. You can complain. You can like like sending them chocolates or like sending them threats. Oh, both. <laughs> we can try. I'll try with you. I don't mind. It could be wrapped in chocolate, but yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 I'll do this with you. No problem. I, I, I move the nine w <laughs> Now we know. Yeah. So, like I said, tools and stuff. What's the best tool, or what have you seen on the way learn about the resident tenancy act? Because to well, learn? To learn it, to get oh. what you're saying stuff out. Because, the, the, like I said, it, exactly the, is a trick. I know in Ontario, they have a set lease, so you can so you yeah. follow a template in, all, in Edmonton. There's no such thing, so we try to follow as we can. Yeah. But I know, based on other things we've learned, what it said, you can write whatever you want to lease, it's meaningless. Mm -hmm. Because the Tennessee Act overrides everything. Mm -hmm. so you can do whatever you want on the lease, you can say so you want to show for that. Cannot be followed because yeah. the lease has picked over it. So how do you? There, are, there's no way to learn, you know, uh, mm -hmm. an act quickly or easily. Mm -hmm. You just kind of sit and read, really or or you sit down with someone who knows it and you ask the questions a little bit at a time, or you come to things like this and you learn. You know, that's that. This is how we learn. We learn through communication. But this is it's the only way. But I notice sometimes like in the years the lease, well, not much, but I just call it. Is the lease is the app different? Because I thought it was one general type in all of Canada. Was it different between each province? Yeah. Uh, it's different between each province. Yeah, yeah this is the Ontario. Right. Okay. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. The rules are different everywhere. Final question. Uh, two questions. Okay. So one is, um, have you seen success in offering payment plans upfront, whereby when you get to the adjudicator, you say, hey. I've Offered it, they failed. Let's give you up. Yes, 
You've seen success. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Yes. Second question is: Is it true that you're only supposed to provide one endpoint, and you're not supposed to continually send endpoints because every time you send a new endpoint, the 14-day or the 19-day response. So I have a question to your question. So they don't pay. You send an N4. Did they pay? No. No. You don't. You only leave one N4. You do one N4 because after that termination date lapses, you file the L1, which is what initiates the application, gets you into the board. And right before you get to your hearing, a couple of weeks before, you submit this L1 L9 update. So it allows you to update what's owing. Because oh. obviously it's not like they start paying. And if they start paying after your N4 goes in, after your L1, sorry, you wasted 200 bucks and lots of time because now that application is out the window. Okay, okay no more questions. I'm not allowed, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.